Hey everyone, I'm going to demonstrate putting together a sectional view with a cutting plane line. I'm in AutoCAD 2015 and I have an isometric representation of the part that we're going to be looking at. We have a couple of uh, diameter features here with a few holes in the parts. So here are the orthographic views of my part. I have the front view here. I have the side view, the right side view here. And what I'm going to do is put a cutting plane line through the front view, and then I will convert my right side view to a section view. Section views are useful when you want to show complex internal geometry, and it also allows you to place dimensions because, as you probably already know, uh, you really shouldn't dimension to hidden lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is place my cutting plane line. I'm going to come up and get a line command and I'm going to use my quadrants as reference points to place my cutting plane line. So I'm going to snap to that top quadrant and then the bottom quadrant. And I'm going to select this line so I have some grips that will allow me to extend my line straight up. Now I do have ortho one so it's going to constrain my movement vertically and horizontally. So I want to extend the endpoints of my line segment just beyond my part here. Now I want to add my arrows to determine my line of sight. And I do this by going to the leader command and placing a leader anywhere on the drawing. Now I turn ortho one. And as soon as it prompts me to enter text, I'm going to leave the text out. So I'm just going to click somewhere in my graphics window here. And I'm going to need to explode this leader. And when I do that, I'm left with an arrow and two line segments. This is actually the landing of my leader here. So I'm just going to select that and then delete it. So I'm left with an arrowhead and one line. Now I can use my move command along with my snaps to snap the endpoint of the arrowhead on to the endpoint of my line. Then I can use my copy command to copy this straight down from the top of my line segment to the bottom. And there is my cutting plane line. It cuts right through the middle of my part. Now there's one more thing I need to do. I need to convert my line type here on my cutting plane line to phantom line type. Now a lot of people get in the habit of changing their properties right here in this section of the ribbon. I try to avoid that and I try to let my layers dictate my line types and my line weights as well as my colors whenever possible. And I will come up here on occasion and use this to change very uh, specific properties of one or two entities. So I'm going to come up to my layer properties manager and I'm going to create a new layer and I will call this cutting plane. And I will change my line type from continuous to phantom. All right, and I'm not going to worry about line weights right now. So I'm going to select my cutting plane line, arrows and lines, and I will select the cutting plane layer to move it over. There it is. So with my center mark here, it's not quite clear what I've got going on with my cutting plane line. It doesn't really accurately look like a phantom, phantom line type. So I can adjust my, my line type scale. I could key in LTS, and currently I've got it set at 0.5. And I have it set at 0.5 because that's what I have decided looks good or acceptable for my hidden lines. So I don't really want to change my global scale factor here, but I still want my phantom line to look as it should. So I'm going to select these, and I am going to do um, a properties change just on the items that I have selected. So I'm going to come up to my properties area of my ribbon and I'm going to click on this little diagonal arrow here and that will bring up my properties dialog box. Now the properties box here, I'm going to go ahead and dock it on the left hand side, uh, gives me all the information, all the properties for whatever I currently have selected. So the line type scale right now is at 1. Now this is different from the global scale. If you remember the global scale when I keyed in LTS was at 0.5.
Now this line type scale is relative, so it's telling me that it is uh, a line type scale of 1 relative to my global scale of 0.5. So what I'm going to do is change this right here to 0.5, and that is actually half, or 0.5, of my global scale. So this 0.5 is half of my global scale of 0.5. So in other words, it's truly a line type scale of 0.25. Now graphically, this looks a little bit closer to what I need for my cutting plane line. So I'm just gonna close out that properties box. Now I'm ready to come over to my right side view and convert this to a section view. So basically what's gonna happen here is all my lines that are hidden uh, in a proper section view will show as object lines. So I'm just gonna simply highlight all of my hidden entities here, and I'm going to move them onto the visible layer. And notice they're all solid lines now because I have my line type set up um, in my visible layer as continuous line type. I'm also going to need to trim out this edge here because that's not going to show up inside the parts. All right. Now, um, actually, I'm going to have to do the same thing on here as well. There we are. Now I need to add my hatch lines. The hatch lines represent the solid material of my part. So if I'm actually cutting through material, I need to represent that by using my hatch lines and showing uh, the section lines of certain areas of my, my view here. So I'm going to come up to the draw section of my ribbon and select hatch. And when I do that, my ribbon will convert to all of my hatch settings. And by default, AutoCAD automatically selects ANSI 31, which is good because that's what I'm going to use. ANSI 31 represents just general material, so I can kind of use it for anything. Uh, it works for this part because I've yet to actually select a material. So if I just move my crosshairs down to a certain section, it'll, it'll show me a preview of what those section lines will look like. And if I like what I see, I'm just going to click. So I want my section lines here, here, uh, don't need it there. That's actually a hole. This is also a hole. Uh, I do need it here and here. All right. So all those hatched areas represent solid material that I'm cutting through to show my section view. Uh, what we're actually seeing here with the other lines are the edges that exist as part of the internal holes. We're actually looking at uh, looking directly at the inner surface of those holes. So we're not going to hatch that part. Now, if I want to change the scale of the hatch, I'm not going to do it through my LTS or my line type scale command. I'm going to click on it, and that will go back to my hatch ribbon here. And I can come over here to this field here for hatch pattern scale, and I can change that to 0.5, and that will decrease the distance between my diagonal lines there. And that's a little closer to how I want it to look. All right, so I have a front view with a cutting plane line, and then I have the respective section view uh, that's now taking the place of my right side view.